Food prices could increase because the wet summer has led to a poor harvest in Britain this year. The National Farmers Union says wheat yields in England are 15% lower than the five-year average. Uh, let's go to the phones. Richard Clare is on the line from the Sheffield Organic Food Initiative. Morning, Richard. Good morning, Tony. Have you, Tony. Have you had an awful summer with the, with the crops? There's been a lot of problems, but mm. um, we grow crops throughout the year. So even in, you know, there's good weather, bad weather. And if we keep on repeating and sow lots of diverse crops, I've had a decent year, I'm afraid. So okay, what kind of stuff's grown? What has grown? Everything has managed to crop, even things like tomatoes, peppers. Uh, it's been difficult for potatoes. They're a bit rare. Plums didn't flower very well, so there's not many of them around. But there's always, if you plant the widest range of things and you do good soil improvement, we're really learning lessons from long-term history how to survive. <laughs> Are we seeing that it's becoming more, uh, more popular and more people growing? There's more people trying, like mm -hmm. yourself, and mm -hmm. very pleased to hear that you dug up your bottom of your garden. Mm. And don't give up, because things aren't going to change. You know, food prices will carry on being up and down and difficult. And, yeah, you, you can supply maybe up to half your diet if you actually apply yourself. And part of that is learning about it. I don't know, did you have a granddad who grew stuff? Tony? I didn't, I didn't. Ah, well, somebody, yeah, we all need somebody mm. to learn from. And that can be our neighbours on allotments and gardens. But, yeah, it's trying to get a culture going where we respect the value of food. And just looking at the prices of food, it's crazy sometimes. Like, you get very cheap deals, and then sometimes things are going to go up. But you can rely on the value of what you've grown yourself to feed your belly and put food in your belly every day, that kind of thing. And, and is it a year-round thing? You're not planting anything now, are you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of crops going in now. There's a whole load of plants which will survive the winter, uh, salads and things like onion sets, peas and beans for next year. So we're thinking ahead for next year already, and that's one of the mental benefits of the activity, that you're always thinking about the future. And in today's economic climate, that's a very positive mental <laughs> attitude to have. So what will you do with peas? You plant those outside now, do you, and, and just what, wait for the spring? Start of November, and actually in your car park. We put some in last, uh, well, it's January actually, uh, they started to grow through the winter, and then they were up and growing strong all through April, May, June. There were peas in, in your car park ready to pick. I don't know if anybody picked them, though, because they look lovely, and that's beautiful. But the food value is another thing. And that's, again, we're looking at gardens and garden centres. Uh, they've been a source of beauty for us. But they can also combine that beauty with actually being productive. And the peas that I grow, they grow to about eight foot tall. They have flowers for about three months. They look beautiful. So you get the beauty, uh, the aesthetic, as well as the productive actually eating them. So how much, how much of your veg that the, the, the you eat, Richard, do you grow? So of my diet, 50% yeah. is sourced from stuff that I grow locally. And I usually have enough to spare to help and give, give stuff away, to share that with others on projects. And I have lots of apprentices who are learning. But it's, it's a long haul. It's not easy. You can't just chuck the seed in and expect it to work. And if we think back in history of civilizations, people like the Egyptians, they used to store seven years' worth of grain just in case of bad times, flood, famine, etc. Mm. And you know, we've got supermarkets which have stuff, lots of stuff on the shelves, but they say if... The transport stopped, all that stuff would go within a couple of weeks, wouldn't it? And you get panic buying. So it's that question. Uh, it's really asking people to invest in themselves, to learn more about the subject, to build up their own food security and get soil that's better in the long run, that's more likely to give decent crops, not have pests and diseases. So it's a, a long-term strategy, and uh, it's not a plan B. It's what humans have relied on for, for all of history, Toby, isn't it? Why do you think people aren't doing it? Oh, well, if, again, if you try and think about, you, if you take your time into consideration, I don't know how much you get paid at Radio Sheffield, but Next every night. hour you put in in your, in your garden is worth however much you, know, you could be earning instead of. So it's really valuing that and valuing, again, the improved soil that will then give you better results in the longer term. So it's a long-term investment uh, and it's well worth making. And what kind of size would I need to be grow? What kind of size garden do you need to do this? Well... Uh, one allotment is quite a big challenge for a beginner, so that would be bigger than your garden, but that would give you uh, the start of getting continuous supply of food. And I say that if you grow things like perennial herbs, rosemary, sage, thyme, etc., then you've got your starter. Everyone can do that just in pots. Second, you can get salads throughout the year, and that's to improve 
the nutrition, not just your bulk. So what I can produce on small scale, which is allotments and little pieces here and there, is additions, augmentations like uh, quality to my diet. But I can't grow things like grain uh, and you know, your bulk. But yeah, yeah, about 50% of your diet can be sourced locally with relative ease, I'm saying. Richard, thanks for talking to this morning. That's Richard Clare there. He's from the Sheffield Organic Food Initiative.